Welcome to Inside the 2018 Dirty Kansas 200, Emporia, Kansas, USA. Emporia, a city with a population of about 25,000 people, is home to Emporia State University, some very busy railway lines, cattle and livestock sales, a quaint downtown, and the world's most famous gravel bike race, the Dirty Kansas. am on race morning and rolling casually to the start, which was delayed by half an hour due to some thunderstorms. Alongside me on the far left of the start line is Jens Voigt and Sven Nace, just a couple of regular guys. The race is neutral until the first gravel sector, then it's a go time. Over 1,000 riders contest the 200 mile dirty Kansas, so proceedings can be a bit dicey early on. In fact, I narrowly avoided this crash that happened early in the race. You guys okay? Considering the severity of the storm that dumped rain on the course earlier in the morning, conditions were a bit boggy here and there, but generally I had no issues with mud pack up. A moment of confusion as the organisers reroute around the notoriously bad mud sector at mile 12. In the green jersey of Gravel City Adventure and Supply is Jeff Young. His wife and family are crewing for me for the 2018 edition. And as a reminder, Dirty Kenza is wet and dirty. In this scene, my 60-something-year-old teammate K-Dog has caught me, which means we will now ride together for as long as possible. And that's me on camera. Hello, trendsetters. If you thought Kansas was flat, please think again. Endless roller hills with the odd steep pitch thrown in for good measure. On the right is Dave Sheik with a flat tire, otherwise known as the coach and mechanic for Amanda Panda Nauman. This is cattle country, meaning there are plenty of cattle crossings in addition to rocks and the sharp flinty stones of the Flint Hills these wonders of nature can wreak havoc on one's tires. Approaching the cattle pens, an early landmark of the Dirty Kansas 200 course. You can build serious speed on these descents all of which should be ridden within your ability level and comfort zone. This race doesn't care who you are. At right is Sven Nace, former world cyclocross champion, fixing a flat tyre as a camera crew watch on. Despite the chances of flat tyres, mechanical problems and even crashes, the beauty of the surrounding landscape has to be seen to be appreciated. There is much more to Kansas than is commonly perceived by those who drive vehicles along the state's network of interstate highways.
This change in landscape along the course is an indicator we are nearing the first checkpoint in the town of Madison, Kansas. On my wheel is Risa, who is riding the new Otso Wahila S steel gravel bike. Dirty Kansas is a solid proving ground for bikes, new or otherwise. We roll into Madison with bagpipes playing along the way. Into checkpoint one, time to reload bottles and food and enjoy some goodies from my cooler. On the road again and rolling a good tempo towards checkpoint two. Now it's time for a bit of mud and a bit of hiker bike. And completely wash off the chain lube I applied at checkpoint one. Duh! We have a strong tailwind anytime the course turns south which doesn't exactly bode well for later in the day. This raw audio gives you an idea of how rough the Dirty Kansas 200 course can be. Teter Hill. It's about 1.2 kilometers or 0.7 miles in length. Don't let it deceive you, the gradient creeps up on you towards the summit. Somewhere along this stretch of road, my teammate K-Dog cut a sidewall in his tire, but thankfully we were able to boot it, but it did cost us just a wee bit of time. This hill is known as the Biotch, it is steep, loose, and a lot of people walk it. I was thankful to have a two by or double chambering setup with small gears for this race. And if you were wondering, I used Absolute Black's 46 30 micro compact chain rings with an 1132 cassette. We're nearing Eureka, Kansas and the halfway point of the race. Everyone is feeling the heat which is really starting to take its toll on the riders. From checkpoint two to three, I'll arrive with a retro camelback known as the Razor, which holds about two liters of water. Also, it was at this checkpoint that K-Dog and I were split up. The next sector of the course is the longest and toughest at about 100 kilometers or 63 miles in length. This is the left turn to begin heading north and where the proverbial poo hits the fan. On this day, there was a block headwind out of the north at about 20 mile an hour, which made for a very tough slog. At right is my friend Adrian, a regular contributor to gravel cyclist and a super strong rider. This water crossing was one of the highlights of the afternoon. So cool and so refreshing. This hill is one of the steeper ones along this part of the course and one where I momentarily cramped. Somewhere during the final third of this sector, I thought it a good idea to slow down my tempo, mostly to avoid cracking and blowing up. I rejoined with Adrian and some other strong ladies for the slog back into Madison and the third checkpoint. We split up a little as we neared Madison and I rolled into town and the checkpoint with Risa.
For the final leg of about 46 miles back into Emporia, I reunited with K-Dog. Unfortunately, K-Dog was feeling less than stellar, but I stuck with him and helped to shepherd him towards the finish line. K-Dog knows how to suffer, and he went incredibly deep during his push to the line. What a rough day, eh? I have cracked. This is the worst. <laughs> I can't even, I don't have the energy to get in my pocket. This is a tough B road that comes with about 27 miles or 44 kilometers still to ride, but the pain was worth it. We were about to be seated and photographed on Salsa Cycles Che Lounge. Post-race, we believe K-Dog was suffering from hyponatremia, a condition of excess water in the body, but without enough sodium to balance it out. Regardless, he sucked it up to finish his second Dirty Kansas 200, a major accomplishment considering his plight. As for me, I finished my third Dirty Kansas 200 from three starts, something I'm pretty chuffed about. Thank you for watching. If you haven't already, please subscribe to the Gravel Cyclist YouTube channel. I'll see you in the next video.